Congratulations on your Waxon purchase. Now let's get into installing the uh, software for the computer program. First, um, if you received a CD with your Waxon, there is now an update. We can email that to you in the form of a zip file. If you've received that zip file, the first thing you need to do is uh, right click on the file and tell it to extract files. So, when you extract that file, you'll see them appear on your desktop. And the files you'll see are the programming file. You'll also see a USB driver for Vista and Windows 7, and a USB driver for Windows XP. I'm using an XP box, so I'm installing that driver now. This takes a few minutes to install but not too awfully long. Now that that's installed we will plug in our USB cable into our computer and you'll see down here that new hardware is found and it knows that it's a prolific USB and it says your new hardware is ready to be used. Now something we have to find out real quick is what COM port that USB cable has been assigned so we're going to go to our control panel however you're comfortable with get, getting there is fine by me then we're going to go to system and we're going to go to hardware device manager I'm just going to close out this screen here because we don't need it anymore when the device manager comes up you'll see a section here for ports and we'll see our prolific USB to serial COM port is COM port 4. Now if you're not sure which one is the USB cable, you can unplug that from your computer and you'll see one go away. When you plug it back in, you'll see that COM port come back. Now that's important that if you've got a bad memory, you write that COM port 4 down uh, so that you know when you get into the software so we can close these screens out now let's connect the cable to the Waxon radio let's install the cable on the Waxon radio to do that we'll open the access panel and we'll rotate that 180 degrees out of the way and then we'll get our USB cable and we'll put that in the connection and we'll push until it's firmly seated and that's very important uh, sometimes if you get the connection to fail error, it's because that is not firmly in place. Okay, now that the cable is installed, we turn on our Waxon radio. And now we want to start the software. I just double click it. If it comes up and says, are you sure you want to run this? Yes, you're sure. The first thing you want to do is come up here to communication port and you want to change that to COM port 4. You may have to do this every time you start your walks on software. Tell it OK. Now you need to read your radio. It's very important that you read the radio first before you do anything. If you get a connection failed just try it, click it OK and try it again. I've noticed that Windows Vista uh, seems much better than Windows XP. I'm not sure if it's uh, just a COM port conflict, but uh, sometimes you have to do that three or four times with a Windows XP box. Here you'll notice the software that I have programmed in, or the pro frequencies I have programmed in. This is under the channel message. There's an option function here and you can set different things as far as your step your uh, power on message what voice you're gonna hear when she talks to you uh, your wide and narrow your offset uh, here's where you determine if you're in memory mode or VFO mode these top three are all memory modes uh, it'll say channel and name channel and frequency or channel uh, only or VFO mode 
also your step is in that field so if there's anything on there you can change it there there's a key set where you can change uh, what the keys on the radio uh, do uh, the soft keys that you could change there's a little map here that uh, shows you uh, those uh, really the only one you can change is this PF key and what it does so entering a channel frequency in is quite simple you just click on the next available channel and you type in the frequency that you wish uh, to program in and you type that in your keyboard click in the next space and type that fre your transmit frequency in if you want the code set on this you need to program that in if you have a tone for to key the, the repeater that's the encode that's what goes out the decode is what goes in you set your power if you want it in the scan if you want it wide and narrow and busy over here on the channel name you can name those repeaters it is limited uh, quite a small limit but it's there nonetheless once you get all your frequencies in uh, you're good to go F you may want to save this so that you can have it uh, later in case the radio crashes uh, it may be have good to have this configuration file so you can attempt to restore it never had that happen that's just a uh, best practice on any radio that you program with a cable after you read it is to save it uh, then you're ready to write your program to the radio and you just click that button and you'll see down here in the status bar that it is writing to the radio writes a success now when you unplug the programming cable from the computer you will see that it is programmed and ready to go so that's how you program your walks on radio if you'll follow the steps in the order that we presented in this video you'll have no problems programming your walks on radio uh, just remember if you do get that uh, connection failed area error that is quite possible uh, that that's just one of the uh, idiosyncrasies of programming by cable try it again real quick and see if that works um, but if you uh, do everything in the steps we showed we're sure that you'll have good results programming your walks on radio thank you for your purchase of your walks on device and enjoy